Danny, this morning on Investor Talk, we had a lot of people interested in the promotion I sent out about your 1,000-mile EV battery. Let's start there. Yes, so we are getting there. So over the past uh, three years, uh, management and the engineering team have been at very hard work investing their time, effort, and energy to optimize our silicon anode materials. And at this current moment, we are currently conducting over 40 active material evaluations with global battery cell manufacturers, automotive OEMs, and high-profile chemical material companies. And because the initial testing results have been satisfactory for these downstream players, we are moving on to larger scale testing. And this includes uh, mixing our silicon nanomaterials with graphite nanomaterials and also putting those materials into larger cell formats such as pouch, cylindrical, and prismatic cells that do directly go into the EV batteries. So we are highly excited about the progress that we are currently making. We've just been in three years into R&D and some of the companies, they've been developing their materials for over five years. So the level of technological maturity that we have achieved is quite fascinating at this moment. The audience was very interested in you protecting your technology. You were talking about your patents. I believe there was a recent news release about uh, going in for your ninth uh, patent. Can you give us an update on that? Yes. Uh, So our ninth patent that we have applied for has been significant because this patent has directly contributed in the increase of our production capacity from a several hundred kilograms to about 4,000 kilograms of production per year based on 24-7 continuous production. And the most important takeaway for this key patent is that we have been able to increase the capacity without the need for any additional equipment or process changes. And just all through a chemical transformation within the manufacturing process, we have been able to achieve this incredible feat. And of course, you recently put out that you've achieved pilot scale capacity and expansion to 4,000 kilograms per year. I know you want to give us an update on this. Yes. And just to delve a little bit more deeper into that capacity increase. So what we have done is that we have added in a low cost special additive that directly goes into the manufacturing process. And what this additive effectively does is that it attaches itself onto the input, which are the silicon particles. And what it effectively does is that it reduces the damage between the silicon particles and it uniformly disperses the silicon particles within the solvents. And the best way to think about this is that when we add water to flour, the flour starts to clump up or agglomerate. But in order for our materials to work the best, the flower grains or the silicon particles has to be dispersed or detached from each particle. And this is what the special additive effectively does. It increases the production yield and quality. Hence, we have been able to achieve that 4,000 year capacity expansion. And of course, there was more news about you investing more in your strategic partner, NBM Korea. Would you like to walk us through this, please? Yes. uh, So this might have been a shocker of the news, but uh, the rationale behind uh, increasing the ownership stems from the increasing performance of our silicon nanomaterials. So at our R&D scale center within South Korea, management and the engineering team has been, as I said, investing tons of their energy into optimizing our products. And because we've seen significant results of our materials, Uh, Management and the board of directors has unanimously agreed that we must uh, increase our ownership to realize a greater proportion of not only the existing, but also the latent economic value, as well as the future free cash flows of the South Korean subsidiary. And to answer sort of why now purchase uh, the NBM Korea shares is that Uh, We have recently gotten governmental certification in South Korea so that venture capital and institutional funds can invest into the subsidiary. And we are currently in discussion with these funds as well as corporate strategic partners that would like to fund 
MBM Korea's expansion and optimization efforts. So before we complete any kinds of financing, uh, we would have liked to increase the ownership to minimize dilution from this financing. So that sort of answers why now uh, for increasing that ownership. I think one of our audience members on Investor Talk pointed out you're the kind of company where you're very focused on building the business. You're also very hard to get an interview with. Can you tell us what we should anticipate as shareholders in the next coming quarter? Yes. So as we are testing with those several battery manufacturers and automotive OEMs, uh, Neo Battery goal for this year is to establish uh, those milestone agreements that come in the form of joint development, collaboration, and or offtake agreements. And these agreements would allow us to propel or thrust ourselves into the next stages of commercialization. But not only are we focusing on these uh, joint development collaborations with the downstream partners, but what is equally is as important are collaborations with the upstream in which we get the silicon supply, as well as those that are on the same level of the supply chain so that we can increase the performance of our materials. And for everybody out there interested in finding out more about Neo Battery Materials, please go to their website or send Danny an email. Thank you so much, Danny, for your update today. Thank you so much.